In the early 20th century, the father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, introduced the idea that human beings are motivated not by outside forces such as God or fate, but instead by the inner workings of our own minds. Freud's protege, the Swiss psychologist Carl Jung, took this idea a step further when he observed that the majority of the world's cultures appear to share an uncanny commonality in their mythology and symbolism, and have done for thousands of years. To Jung, this suggested that there must, in a sense, be a core programming or architecture of thought that all human minds have in common, and this he called the collective unconscious. According to Jung, the collective unconscious is the same for all humans, and it manifests in particular emotional and behavioral patterns, which Jung referred to as archetypes. The word archetype comes from the Greek for first molded, as Jung believed that these conserved manifestations of the collective unconscious have been molded over time by the cumulative experience of our ancestors and have been passed down from generation to generation. Now it is important to note that in Jung's view, the human psyche is divided into three parts. The ego or conscious part of the mind, the personal unconscious, where the individual's experiences are processed subconsciously, and the collective unconscious, from where the archetypes arise. Therefore, the archetypes operate on us, for the most part, unconsciously, acting like templates or filters through which we attempt to make sense of the world. Jung provided numerous examples of archetypes, including the hero, the great mother, and the wise old man, and claimed that all of the most powerful stories in human history, and even our dreams, are all manifestations or expressions of these archetypes. However, of all the different archetypes, Jung describes the following four as being, in his view, the most important. The anima and animus. This archetype represents our feminine and masculine aspects. According to Jung, we are all born with the capacity to psychologically manifest both male and female aspects. However, we are molded by society, as much as by biology, to assume one aspect more than the other. However, unfortunately, according to Jung, the more we become wholly male, or wholly female, the more we turn our back on half of our psychological potential as humans. The Persona from the Latin word for mask, the archetype of the persona is the curated or edited version of ourself which we are happy to share with the outside world, and which conceals our true nature. Today, one need only look on social media to see this archetype in full effect. The Shadow in stark contrast to the archetype of the persona, the archetype of the shadow is the part of ourselves that we are ashamed of and do not wish for the world to see. We can find this archetype expressed in stories such as Robert Louis Stevenson's The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. And finally, we have the true self. This archetype is, according to Jung, the most important of all, for it is the great unifier which tries to harmonize all of the archetypes, thereby bringing us into a state of self-actualization, which, according to Jung, is the very goal of life. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.